Hello. 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 Uh, format. Uh, I would have preferred to have met you all in, in person, of course, in Leuven. Um, but then again, Zoom has, uh, Zoom has allowed others to participate who otherwise would not have been able to, to attend. So I guess it's not all uh, bad. I don't want to take too much time, uh, but I do want to offer you some context on, 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 on the background of, of this uh, workshop, where it all uh, started. I, I've prepared a, a little uh, PowerPoint to, to guide you through this. Um, so it all started with uh, this event, Erasmus Dream, an exhibition that celebrated in 2017 the uh, quincentenary of the foundation of the Free Language College, the Collegium Trilingue um, in Leuven, um, which, an exhibition which was curated by uh, Professor Jan uh, Papi. Uh, and then this this led to to uh, a KU Leuve project funded by the KU Leuve Research Council, uh, um, and, and our team is is, is uh, constituted by by Jan uh, as a supervisor, Jan Papi, and me as the co-supervisor. Then we have two senior advisors, Pierre van Hecke and Ton van Hal, uh, one postdoctoral fellow, Andy Petermans, and two PhD students, Xander Fijs and uh, Maxim. Uh, Malle and th those two, those PhD students, succeeded in, in obtaining some extra funding, which allowed us to hire a magnificent uh, grammaticus trilinguis uh, in the persona of Andy uh, Petermans. Um, and we've been working on on on, on uh, student notes uh, for, from the Collegium Trilingue. So we wanted to find out how these three so-called sacred languages were actually taught in, in the, the classroom. One of the few blind spots in the magisterial overview by Henry de Vogt of, of the history uh, of the Collegium uh, Trilingue. And for this, we uh, embarked on a large scale heuristic uh, odyssey to find uh, student notes. Uh, because before Erasmus Dream, there was only one corpus of student notes known, um, which was mentioned in a footnote by de Vogt uh, um, but now we, we have uh, at least 13 bodies of, of student notes from the Trilingue, of which we are sure, so per, there are per, uh, many more probably, uh, so that's why uh, it's still counting this, this uh, number of 13. And we want to, oh, we are developing a database, as you might know, uh, Dalit, the database of the Leuven Trilingue, where we will edit some of these uh, corpora of student uh, notes. So three uh, to be more precise, one for each uh, language. And while researching these student notes, we faced several difficulties and numerous methodological uh, questions arose. And from this, the idea grew to organize uh, a methodological workshop. And we asked ourselves many, many questions, among other the following. So how should we analyze uh, student notes? What tools can we use? Uh, should we adopt classical philological approaches or, or look for digital opportunities? Um, how can we assess the level of instruction? Um, is it the basic instruction? Is it the university level? Something in between? How can we distinguish between personal reading notes and student notes? Um, to what extent can classes be considered a form of collaborative reading? Uh, what use can, can AI be, especially HDR, transcribus, uh, versus classical uh, uh, paleographical approaches, uh, uh, which seem to get, uh, are getting out of fashion nowadays? Um, how can we present these student notes? Uh, how can we edit them in a meaningful uh, way? Are we going for a traditional edition, a digital format? Uh, but is this what is the best for annotated prints, for instance, which are notoriously difficult uh, to edit? Um, might databases uh, be a solution or not? Um, we should really make make a, a job out of uh, procuring good editions, uh, any least at, at, in any case of our uh, data sets. That's that's one important desideratum, I, I think. Um, uh, also about the form and typology of student notes, how are they set up and why in this way uh, can we set up a typology of, of the notes in relation to their contents. 
Um, what terms should we use? Student notes, college notes, dictates. Uh, I invite you to reflect on, on these terms the, uh, you use and whether they are adequate uh, or not. Uh, are they neutral enough or are, do they carry any um, connotations that are undesirable? Um, also, what are the codecological properties of, of student notes? How are they related to printed text, if at all? And, and on what support are they uh, written? And another question is, what is the historical value of student notes? What can they teach us? And also what not, of course. Um, and the, a, key, a key question there is, in my opinion, what is the relationship between the actual sources we have and the classroom practice itself? So to what extent can we truly penetrate the, the Renaissance class uh, room? And to what extent do they reflect humanist or other uh, ideals and, and scholarship? And of course, there are probably many more questions, but I can't uh, uh, discuss them all here in this brief, uh, short introduction. Um, the main goal of, of, of this workshop is, is to come to something of a consensus about uh, what should be in a handbook uh, on student notes and, and we're very interested in your ideas on this topic uh, and, and you're all invited to, to share your ideas uh, in the Google document that, that we have set up for, for sharing your thoughts uh, with us uh, over the following two weeks during uh, the course of this workshop. I see that Xander has already uh, shared the link in the chat. So. Uh, please feel free to serve to the document and add your thoughts now or at any other moment uh, in the in the following days or weeks. Um, <clears throat> and, and of course, these questions are should not only be discussed in a Google document, uh, which which can serve as a kind of common college notebook for us. But uh, I invite you all also to discuss these questions in the in the sessions it's themselves, of course, and 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 uh, during the Q and A and so on. Um, we'll be having no less than uh, four keynotes and 20 regular papers, both by established uh, scholars and by early career researchers. Uh, I've made the count, there will be 27 speakers from nine different countries, so that's not uh, bad. Um, regular uh, papers will be 20 minutes speaking time with uh, 10 minutes Q&A, and for the keynotes it will be about uh, the double amount of of that uh, we'll see. Um, and also important is that we are going to record uh, all, all the presentations so that people who are not able to, to attend every uh, session or every paper uh, have the possibility to uh, rewatch it if, if they like uh, to. Um, so they will be made available afterwards. Um, and then one last thing. Uh, uh, we've prepared a little virtual excursion for you all uh, because we would have really liked to, to have um, uh, received you in, in our beautiful university town of Leuven. But now we can only offer a, a virtual excursion uh, to our special collection. So if you want to browse through our trilingual treasures, you can, you're, you're invited to, to check out the, the video, a little video of a, of a book showcasing we made uh, that is has been uploaded to YouTube uh, last night. And the link is again posted in the chat by, by Xander. And I now pass on uh, the words to the project supervisor and my esteemed colleague and friend Jan Papi. And I will stop sharing my, my screen. Yeah. Thanks a lot, uh, Raf, uh, for this uh, uh, beautiful introduction. I I'm sure that everyone is in mood already to start with uh, this uh, colloquium, which uh, will be held during two weeks. So uh, it is a, a sequel. And we are very glad that uh, at this very moment, we discover that in many places all over the world, people are involved with this team or with this uh, technical aspect of how to cope deal with uh, student notes or in general uh, uh, dictates. Uh, the medieval tradition is all, all, all around, of course, but those tiny notes may open a, a wonderful world of Renaissance learning and teaching and the pedagogy, the tools used. 
also uh, we would like to enter a different fields, not only the one uh, dealing with language courses, but of course in the Renaissance, these are uh, uh, central local. But um, in, uh, well, while seeing the great enthusiasm you all showed in uh, showing up with magnificent proposals and uh, superb topics, great Renaissance uh, names occur in the program, but also uh, very surprising uh, notebooks or uh, aspects uh, show up. So in this respect, we, we are sure and very confident that at the very end of this colloquium, we will have uh, all material available and all uh, ideas uh, mature to be uh, stored in a handbook. And I greatly thank Ralph for uh, organizing all this because without this magnificent colleague, uh, we would not have this uh, uh, colloquium. And uh, after, at the very end of this colloquium, you will uh, not only um, well have the pleasure of looking at the, uh, the movie, but you're always welcome to come to Leuven when time is ready and the Corona Volente uh, sign is uh, green. And um, we are assured that uh, these days will bring together scholars from all disciplines, from all corners, uh, to reflect on a, a uh, a very uh, well increasing uh, uh, topic in uh, Renaissance studies and in uh, uh, neo Latin literature, as uh, such. At uh, the beginning of this conference, I should introduce you shortly to our uh, etiquette. Hmm? What will we do? We will have presentations, of course, and the well, the intention is that you keep to the time allotted to you. That's one thing and uh, we will uh, make sure that you do. After each uh, paper, you will be invited to uh, for uh, questions, discussions. In the recordings you will see afterwards, you will, can, uh, will be able to go back to those discussions in order to adapt your own views or to uh, polish uh, your uh, own paper. And that's for later.